Hey guys, welcome to the pod. The Pea Pod. I'm Ladle. And I'm Peas. And we've got a full ladle of peas just for you. So let's get to it. One of these days oh, it'll work all the way yeah. through. <laughs> no, one of these and days. It, it won't take us three, four different, <laughs> three <laughs> four different times to do the same thing that we do every week. Yeah, literally. I did it in my doorway for somebody the other day. <laughs> you did? Oh, it was Gracie and Jalen. They came to my door and oh. they were like, we just watched your podcast. And I was like, hey guys, welcome to the pod. And they were like, oh, she did the thing. I was like, <laughs> that's crazy. That's fun. We got fans. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We've always had fans. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is my friend. And our moms. Yeah. <laughs> and our g- grandparents. Yeah. Mhm. 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 Mm-hmm. Shout out to grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, for today, Monday, welcome to the word Monday. Mhm. We are going to talk about um, Mark b- Bookmark. Uh, bu- bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> bookmark. Book, chap- book of Mark. Book of Mark, chapter four. Four. Um, what does it say? Verse 35. Verse 35. Through 41. Through 41. And then I'm, I will, I want to make a few other cross references to other parts in the chapter. <coughs> oh, exciting. Yes. So, um, Thanks. Y- you, uh, you want me to read it? Or do you want to read it? Uh, I'll read it. Okay, go ahead. And on that day, when the evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, and just as he was. And other boats were with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he wasn't in the stern or er, he, he he was, was in the, in the stern. He, sorry but he was he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm he said to them why are you so afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with the great fear and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? We, well, wow. That was amazing. Um, we talked about this in church. That's why I brought this up. Um, uh, because there were some things that the pastor was talking about that I had never considered mm. um, in terms of this story. Because if you're a Christian and you've been in the church at all, you've heard the Jesus Calms the Storm story. Um uh, there was a the part here. So if you go up back up to the parable of the seed, this is verse 26 of Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, he says that, you know, the kingdom of God is as if a man could should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how the earth produces by itself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain of in the ear. But when the grain is ripe at once, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And so Jesus is trying to get across this point that, um, you know, being in the kingdom of God is like letting him do a lot of the work. He says he doesn't know how the seed grows, but it grows and he sleeps and he ri- he sleeps and he w- he's awake, whatever. Um, and so what the pastor is pointing out was that if you go back down to the storm, it says that, but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And. And it was sort of postulation, less of like, oh, this is what's happening. Um, and more of, you know, this could be what's happening. And that is that, is Jesus now representing the parable he just did? Sleeping in the cushion during a storm. He knows that Jesus is gonna, or God is going to take care of everything, even though they're in the midst of a storm. Is he sleeping on the cushion, representing that even when he goes to sleep, that he's still taking care of that? It, it, it could be. And I, I, I like that interpretation. I think it's a, a perfectly good example of people, or a perfectly good example for the disciples to sleep during those things. Um, not necessarily intentionally sleep, but you get the point. Um, but the other thing I, I always like to point out in this uh, story is just the, the, the sentence at the end of verse 36. Um, it says, and leaving the boat just as he was, and, and leaving the crowd, they took him and them, he, oh my gosh, sorry. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat 
just as he was. And then it says, and other boats were with him. That, you're like, what does that have to do with the story? What does that have to do with it? It doesn't. It, it, it's simply and simply just an eyewitness account reporting what he saw. They were like, what did you see on that day when Jesus did this? And what did you see this? And they said, well, he was doing this thing. They were going with them and there were some other boats with him. It's just a detail. It's one of the biggest, for me, one of the biggest proofs of the Bible being true and the Bible being something that is from an eyewitness, something that people actually saw mm -hmm. because that's not something that the Bible writers needed to put in there, that Mark needed to put in there. There was nothing about that that's like, redemptive necessarily it's just simply proof of somebody explaining the story you know yeah um what's another thing that he it was explaining that day um oh so if we look at um way back in chapter 1 verse 25 this is when jesus is rebuking a uh, a demon out of somebody and it says uh, but jesus rebuked him saying be silent and come out of him and that phrase the way that he speaks that way is the exact same phrase that is in the storm passage when he says peace be still it's the same word and it's the same like, commanding tone that he's using to calm the storm as well as being in charge of of demons which i think is an interesting fact and shows the power that jesus has mm -hmm. do you have something i have uh, uh, one other thing i want to say but if you want to yeah go. When I, okay, I was reading a book this week to one of our kids at PCM, and it was about oh. this <gasps> oh, yeah. passage, and <coughs> it's a book series that is really wonderful. I don't really know who it's by or who does the illustrations, but um, the kid that was listening to me tell this story during our reading time, I mean, he usually is like bouncing off the walls all over the place, but he was just like enthralled in this book and which you didn't even know it was going to be about you thought it was going to be about no noah's i thought it was going to be about <laughs> yeah. noah's ark because there was like a wave on the front we had just talked about noah's ark earlier in our bible lesson i was like oh perfect this book's about noah's ark i'll read that <laughs> it was not about noah's ark it had to do with water <laughs> yeah <laughs> not the way that i thought but um it got to the point where uh they had woken him up and you know he they said do you not don't you care about us and in the book it's like you know kind of paraphrasing it's like don't you care about us why do you hate us yeah. like why are you still sleeping like there's a bunch of text bubbles coming out of these guys mouths and then one of the other kids kind of started acting up so i was like talking to him trying to get him to calm down and i mean the k kid that was listening to me read this story was like can you stop to this other kid? I'm trying to listen to this book. Please. <laughs> it's the best part. And you're interrupting. <laughs> and it, it, you know, then got into the part of, you know, he woke up and said, peace, be still. And the rest of it. And, and he was like, wow. And then at the end, it showed the disciples. And they said, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And it, it, it again, was a paraphrase of, you know, who is this guy that the ocean would listen to him say to stop? And uh, I kind of pictured like a uh, a movie kind of of the disciples have now been following Jesus for the last three, two, three chapters, depending on who they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who I don't really know how much time has passed, like physically. But for us, you know, two to three chapters. <laughs> and they haven't really understood that Jesus is, in fact, God. And it gets to this point where he's been performing all these miracles, doing all these things, like showing them these parables and uh, privately teaching them. And they just are like, wow, this guy really knows his stuff, you know? He's very spiritual. Yeah. And it gets to this point, and they're they're like aren't you gonna do something because they've seen him do these miracles they've seen him do these things they're like aren't you gonna you know do something now and he does and he's like don't don't you know who i am at this point have you I, still no have you faith still no faith after everything yeah it, like <laughs> do you know who my father is <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like seriously do you know who i am because me and my father are one <laughs> which he did and well yeah, he gets to that later. 
Yeah. At some point. Right. He yeah. explains to them. Yeah. But. In John 15. And then it hits them. They're like, whoa. Like, I, they clearly didn't expect that. Who have we been following? This guy's not just a good teacher. Like, this might be God. This might be the guy that they've been talking about mm-hmm. in our Bibles. If you've seen, uh, wh- what is it? Um, <coughs> Spy Kids. The one where they're in the video game. It's like the second or third one. And there's the guy. He's the guy in the front of the game. He's this guy who's supposed to come. And uh, it ends up being Junie, I think. Mm-hmm. And he... Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, y- you know, he's he's the one standing there who's there to save everybody, bring them out of the game. And they keep calling them the guy. And then there's like one false guy that comes with 99,000 lives or something like that. And then he, they all, it, he dies instantly because he does something stupid. And <laughs> they're like, he's the guy. But then, you know, Junie ends up being the guy. But that's what that reminds me of is, yeah. is you're, you're, you're the guy. Yeah. You're the one on the front of the Bible. You're the guy who wins. That kind but of thing. I just imagine, like, a movie-style setup for this. And, like, you know, there's all this tension building as the storm's going on. And then it's just, like, this big, like, instrumental, like, flourish as mm-hmm. it's, like, you know. He does the kind of Fantasia, Mickey Mouse Fantasia thing where he's like this. Well, not even during that part. That's not when I feel like it really hits them. I think oh, it's, really? it's, it's when he sits down and everything when, is calm. When he says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with the great fear and said to one another. When it says that they were filled with the great fear. Does your Bible say the great fear? Or filled with great fear? With a great fear. Oh, mine says, and they were filled with great fear. Oh. Well, anyway, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were filled with great fear. Yeah. And that's when I feel like it'd be like. Yeah. And is it a fear that is sc- like scared, like terrified? Or is it a fear of like, you know, when God says you fear me, mm-hmm. it's not it is a, a healthy amount of like you need to be a little scared of the consequences, but more of like a fear like you would fear your mom and dad when you're younger you know you know they're it's a mix of both and at this point because because they're realizing that the guy that they've been hanging out with is god they've been messing up in Mm -hmm. front of him yeah they've been goofing around in front of him yeah and they're like shoot that's like all those stupid like YouTube short videos where they're like some guy cuts another dude off in traffic and he goes you don't even know how to drive you suck and he goes <laughs> to work and his it was his boss that he's not met yet yeah. or something like that that kind of or like have a, you seen the ones whoa. of the guys that will like stop at a red light and they'll just stay stopped when it's green and it'll go like honk if you hate God or whatever and then it opens the trunk and there's a guy dressed like Jesus, Jesus and he's like Arr. and then yeah. the driver's like. <laughs> Yeah, I think those are really funny. I mean, not very accurate. <laughs> yeah, a little sacrilegious, but yeah, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. the moment that you realize you <laughs> you're you're being kind of watched. Yeah, by the one who could really bust you up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, so, and also, just like a wow. How awesome that we are. Have been following the guy yeah. that can calm the wind. God. This is the guy. Mm-hmm. This is the guy. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the one that they've been telling us about in Isaiah. This is the mm-hmm. one they've been telling us about in all of the Old Testament. Like, this And is only the, the disciples God. get to see that. It's not, mm-hmm. He doesn't do that for all the other people. Right. This is just on the boat. And maybe the people on the other boats, you know, caught wind of that. Depending because on how serious the storm was, but well, it sounds pretty serious to me. Yeah, because they think they're gonna die. I mean, like more. <laughs> I mean more of like, you know, whether or not they saw it happen or s- that well, kind of thing. It says there were other boats with them, though. Yeah. Other boats were with him, mm-hmm. and so therefore, I would think that there's like a few boats crossing this, like, little we'll sea. Mm-hmm. And so obviously they're like holy crap, this is a huge storm. And then all of a sudden it's like, nothing. That last line, uh, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I always think of the 10th Avenue North song. Every time I read that, the one that goes, though in the wind and waves obey, strong enough to sing you break open the skies and say, those who cry. Maybe I'll have to do that as my song <laughs> on Wednesday then, if you've never heard it. 
But I've got a different song that I, I want to do. I'll put it in the books for later on. <laughs> okay. But there's also one other thing I want to mention mm-hmm. that he talks about. And I can't, I'm going to see if I can remember the correlation. But later on in Mark, it's almost a very similar thing. Um, at the end of Mark 6, all the way in verse 45, it says, um, immediately, and then this was after he feeds the 5,000. Um, he says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out in the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway pain- painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, that's like 6 a.m. or something like that. Or no, between 3 and 6 a.m. Um, about the fourth watch of the night. Um, he came to them walking on the sea. Then it says, he meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and they cried out for they all, they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, take heart. It is I do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them and the wind ceased and they were utterly astounded. And for, and for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened, which is so crazy and then this obviously that's when peter walks on water he, mark doesn't really put that part in there but um it says that he i don't see do you remember him talking about this because i because i remember being just it's because in exodus chapter 33 he meant to pass by them it's the same phrase as um whenever when you see moses wants to see god's glory so he says go hide yourself in the rock and i will pass by you like his glory will pass by him, and it was like the whole earth shattered. This might have and he been was the week before, because no, this was this in the same sermon because it was by the Australian dude. Who? The Australian. Remember he, the Australian dude? No, that was must be the week that I was sick. Because we talked about them crashing in the roof last week. Yeah, but you thought you were there for the Australian guy too. No, I don't know who you're talking about. I, I have Rats. no idea what track you've been on today, oh. but it's I I'm 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 here. Okay. I'm buckled in. Okay. You're well, taking me on a ride. It's a <laughs> okay. Well, understand. that's what we talked about that Sunday. You were sick then. Um, he made a correlation to the two instances, and I can't remember. It's probably because oh, it's probably just like Jesus being in control of your life, right? In both instances, Jesus says, "Peace be still." In this instance. Um, there's another account in the Gospels where Jesus gets in the boat and then they're just there at the spot they were supposed to be, just like transported. Um, uh, so anyway, um, I don't know. It's just really cool to see the part about how he meant to pass by them. Um, and he was going to, I don't even remember, but just focus on the other part. Mark 4, about letting Jesus be the Lord of your life. That's the point that we're trying to make here. Yes? No? That Jesus Maybe. is God. Yeah, that Jesus is God. Is Jesus is what we God. So, there we go. There's Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I hope that was edifying for you. And I hope that you go read it on your own and learn as much as you can from it. Because everybody's in a storm. You're either coming out of a storm or going into a storm, is my perspective. So there are points of peace. Absolutely, there are points of peace. But for on the whole, if you look at your life, it's just kind of a always yeah. this. Chi-Chi and I were, uh, my coworker Chi-Chi and I were talking. We had a shift yesterday together. And uh, I said, you know, it's always kind of comical to me when people are like, oh, I don't need prayer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, okay. Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> And she's like, don't worry, it's coming. You'll need it soon. <laughs> and, and, and I said, and <laughs> and I said, and all your troubles will be shipping out with that book that I mentioned earlier in the next four to six weeks. And, and you, we'll can, be, call you can call us then. <laughs> we're yeah. kind of laughing about that. But yeah. No, it's true. It's that prayer hope, like no prayer thing is, is yeah, hard to like, deal with. Yeah, they're like, life's good right now. And I'm like, give it, give it five to ten business days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I mean. I mean, realistically, like sometimes people are going through stuff that's hard to talk about, and mm-hmm. so they just would rather not. So sometimes in that situation, I just pray for them anyway, mm-hmm. like after I hang up. But uh, yeah, you're right. It's always it's always something happening. So don't lose sight of it. Don't lose sight of Jesus being God and being in awe of him, because he will surprise you daily mm-hmm. if you let him. Yeah. So join us on Wednesday to hear about small and large worship teams. 
and we'll be waiting for you with another heaping healthy ladle of peas. Bye guys. <laughs>